Hi, this is Vidya from the Kowai Post. Pirapan, Chasing the Brigand is the book that was written by K. Vijay Kumar, who was the former STF chief and currently the national security advisor of uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs. So he is there with us today and we shall be talking to him about the book and the Maoist movements in uh, the Tamil Nadu and Kerala border. Glad that you're here and you're talking to Kowai Post. Sir, uh, I've read your book, it's wonderful. and. Uh, let me ask you a few questions about it. Sure. Uh, as far as this book is concerned, what was more difficult, catching Mirabal or writing this book? I'm very glad to meet with you. Uh, to to be in Coimbatore, which is my own place. My best wishes to Koei Post uh, yes. fans and readers. Uh, both are uh, formidable challenges, but I think writing took longer. Okay. I had only three stints in the STF. First time I went one month only, and that was on a French leave. Then, I mean, without permission, in the sense that I took only one week from the then Chief Minister Jailalitha Ji. Uh, she gave me permission to go for a week, but I found it fascinating. I stayed on for a month. I had to come back because she was sitting on a fast for Kaveri water in the Madras Marina Beach. So I was recalled by her secretary. So I very reluctantly came back because that was also an important job. Again, I came back for a short stint, but I was pulled out to be posted as Commissioner Chennai. I was very little upset to go because Chennai Commissioner is a very prestigious and uh, uh, and want very much uh, like post but even then I thought uh, STF operation is incomplete so I was little upset. I went and third time like a boomerang I came back to STF. So overall I did about uh, say about 17-18 months together that means an year and a half whereas writing I made all the notes within the first one or two years. years of and put it all in a book. Yeah, because I was tracking him right from the beginning. I was SP Salem 83-85. That time Virapan was not a known name, though he started creeping into the police records by 84 because there was a Sevi counter. He was a forest offender from Metu area. So from Kolathur Metu, the history sheet, we call what is called the history sheet to keep track of undesirable elements, suspects and uh, criminals. Uh, so he was figuring in the suspects and forest offenders list and under Sevi counter tutelage under his uh, patronship the, this, this, this young boy he became an important man slowly and he started wiping out other gangs and I was uh, watching his progress or rise in the underworld or a criminal world from wherever I was. So my fascination or interest in the matters happening in Satyamangalam forest, that time it was more Metur and neighborhood, mm -hmm. slowly he moved westward. So he migrated to the west because of the pressure of the raids uh, launched by Mr. Walter Devaram, relentless, ceaseless raids by Walter Devaram and Shankar Bidri. They were the captains of the team that point of time. And, Chan uh, and Sanjay Arora was the num number two of Walter Devaram. And he, as a very young officer, he had done a lot in keeping the morale of the team very high and I had the chance to come back to SA for a third time. So in short, my writing effort, uh, the initial notes were all done within a year or two but then it was not in a concise form. It was all loose sheets of various thoughts, emotions, feelings, anecdotes, various episodes and uh, second hand reports, first hand and also some research on the basic documents, what the magazines say including Nagira and including uh, Dina Miller, including the, and the various papers. So I had those clippings and it helped me that I was the last man in STF when this operation was concluded. So I could chat with a lot of people and understand what happened. That's how the book came. So the struggle was protracted in both. Okay, okay. And why do you think uh, you were talking about uh, the CM picking you as the right person for uh, to head STF? Why did you think she uh, chose you? That's because uh, when I was in Kashmir, I was, do I was with the BSF, Border Security Force, and I was quite busy with 50,000 men under my command. There was 48 battalions and one training battalion, 49 battalions being nearly 49,000 people. And I had a huge responsibility for the entire valley, uh, that is um, Srinagar and uh, Baramulla, two frontiers were with me. Typically two IG should handle it, but I was the only IG handling both. So when I was so busy there, this Rajkumar episode happened, and Justice Sabarwal, and I think Barucha, these two people condemned the states and said the states have buckled under pressure and they have yielded to the brigands' demands and they wanted to release about 50 and odd uh, Tata accused. So they went in for a lot of uh, critical comments on how a state should be run and so on. And at that point of time, uh, Mr. Shekhar Gupta, who was, uh, who was the chief editor or managing editor of Indian Express, he wrote a center page article on how is that, that Tamil Nadu and Karnataka 
uh, they don't have officers of the caliber of KPS Gill or other illustrious officers of the north who can take the fight up front and tackle this issue and sort out the problem. So that sort of uh, slightly triggered uh, my own thoughts and said, um, though I was very busy in the operation, the middle of operations one day, I think the same day evening I wrote a rejoinder mm -hmm. saying that uh, people like Walter Devaram has led the force, people like Sanjay Arora was there, Bidri was there, then we had Kempaya, then we had uh, this side, a lot of illustrious officers had uh, Shailendra Babu, Tamil Selvan. So there is no death of officers and including me, I am willing to, I am most willing to go and uh, uh, do this. It's not because of the lack of officers, it's because of other things, you know, the sacrifices should not be forgotten. So when I wrote this letter, I just wrote the letter and left it at that. But he prominently uh, uh, placed the letter on the front page, I think it came on the front columns. So it got noticed, perhaps. Uh, Ms. Jailalitha, uh, she was in the opposition, she must have taken note of that. And maybe she, when she was re-elected in the month of May, June in, two, in uh, 2001, one of the first things she did was to ring me up and say, are you willing to come? I am going to have Mr. Walter Devaram, who had retired by then. She recalled Walter Devaram as a joint task force commander and for me to head the Tamil Nadu part and the other side, uh, Mirji was there. So when she made the offer, I jumped at it because this was a once in a lifetime chance and I always wanted to be part of this. So that's how I, she knew that I was passionate about it and she thought that I may deliver and that's how I got called. Okay. So the, the delay in uh, getting program, I mean it was possible only after you gave it. So can that be attributed to political interference? Sorry? Can Sorry. That, could that be attributed to political interference? No, politi delay. for the earlier inability to catch it, is it? Yeah. See, there were a little bit of politics, no doubt, but each government has its own method of uh, approaching. Uh, her approach was to go. Yes, it was only during uh, Madam Jaya Lalita that this. That's why he also uh, took her on a very personal uh, as a, uh, animosity. He thought that she has a personal agenda. And he also went on the tape. Nine hours of his tape was recorded and it was flashed all over the TV. And he thought that he was, and he also campaigned against her for the openly saying that she should don't elect her. And he thought that he has a clout with certain sections of the Tamil Nadu public. And uh, he was personally upset that she was taking the fight into the jungles. And indeed, uh, she was because of the Good Friday blast in the, on, on 7th of April 1993, where 22 people died, 22 people died, she and uh, Virendra Moli, who was the Chief Minister of Karnataka, met and the STF of Tamil Nadu was born. There again, I had a role because I trained some of these boys in Chennai, Virapuram, outskirts of Chennai near Avadi. So, and she was completely hands-on and she said, you must uh, f finish off this kind of thing. You cannot allow this kind of thing to go, either arrest him or, or make him surrender or if it comes to that, there's an encounter, whatever. So, she gave free hand to the STF and she was very keen about it. And in fact, most of the, the gang got whittled down, reduced in numbers from three digits to single digit during her time itself. It was not the other government was not wanting the operation, the other government went in a different mode. They uh, were wondering because this, this, this person started sending feelers to the next government that he may surrender. But he did not get the correct handle to surrender because surrender is easily said but cannot be done because what will happen to the cases? How will you tackle the cases? What is the prosecution? You cannot give amnesty without prosecution. You can have fast track court, you can have uh, softer prison terms. Softer prison, not the terms, softer prison. So he asked for an open jail. He asked for relatives can meet him every second day, whatever. Yeah. The government was negotiating and he had a nine point charter, which was accepted by the Tamil Nadu government and Karnataka government after he kidnapped a set of scientists, uh, Sanani and Krupakar and others, he abducted them. Before that, he abducted some uh, foresters also. So back to back, there were two kinds of uh, abductions happening. This was in the year 97 or so. Then he was actually on the down uh, slide because he didn't have enough money. Yeah. It was then he turned to the fringe elements of so-called Tamil Nadu liberation and retrieval troops and all, who had their own agenda and they wanted a safe heaven to have their uh, training camps and Virapin didn't have money. So it was an unholy alliance of these elements which started taking root in the jungles of Satyamangalam and uh, thank God the operation got over, otherwise we would have had a huge problem on our hands. So all these elements got together and it was, uh, it all came to notice when, when Meke Rangasamy was executed by Virapan for so-called misbehavior with uh, a woman and Meke Rangasamy was part of his gang till then. 
After executing him, they had disappeared from there and SDF came to know that uh, perhaps uh, some skeleton is lying somewhere, it could be the skeleton of Veerappan himself because Veerappan was rumored, mm -hmm. it was uh, to be sick with tuberculosis or uh, yeah, some kind of infectious yeah. cough, yeah. Uh, not die problem, it is more serious debilitating health problem. So the rumor was that he is almost gone. Okay. So we, uh, Tamil Shelvan and uh, Ashok Kumar, Tamil Shelvan was the SP, senior SP there, Ashok Kumar was the DSP, they all went and raided some areas, Manikarai, and they found a skeleton resembling the height, in terms of height it was exactly like Veerappan, it happened to be one of Maker Rangasamy. So when they dug up the area, they found a lot of uh, stashes of uh, condiments and uh, and food items, oil, etc. And also some evidence of ceremony being done. Ceremony means a terminal ceremony of a ritual, ritual being done for the death. It was done by Govindan himself for Mekaranga Swami. There was a coconut shell broken and some other things, some evidence. And underneath they found a Nakiran magazine and also they found uh, some retrieval, this diary, diaries of Virapan's gang, mm -hmm. which showed that the fringe groups were staying with them for a long time okay. in big numbers. And then that was the time when they hoisted the flag of Tamil Desam, then the Shegaura kind of beret he was wearing. They had their own uh, plans. It would have been a very dangerous uh, track for Tamil Nadu and Karnataka also. So, so this is what happened during that uh, 97 to 99 and 2000 you know what happened. He, he abducted the most famous personality of Karnataka and thereafter there was no looking back because the same government which had uh, not looked at him softly, which was thinking, which was considering uh, surrender because there was no option in the sense that why the because people started questioning the amount of money spent on these raids and infructuous raids you have caught so many people but you have not caught Veerappan so these kind of things are going on so it was uh, it was a point of uh, discussion that why not allow him to surrender sir and uh, see uh, in your book you have spoken about you know the non-availability of helicopters and drones yeah. during that time that could have been you know more, much more easier does the same apply now with you know the natural proliferation? Yeah, you can draw a certain comparison because both are in the jungle. Right. But he is not, this man is not a gorilla in that sense. He was not fighting for a doctrine or an ideology. He was fighting for himself. The so called ideologues. The is the yeah, but the terrain is uh, somewhat similar because right. invisibility. Right. Uh, and is an now is pretty much. Yeah, right. so you can say that uh, in terms of tackling a rugged or a ragged terrain. We have great problems because the policeman have to enter and he has not behaved like a policeman but like a jungle man. He has to become, adapt himself to the surroundings. He has to be camouflaged, he must be concealed, he has to be subtle, he has to be small in movement and so on, silent, stealthy. So in doing this, there is a great uh, learning process. It doesn't come easily because tactics are not so easy. You have to behave in a very subtle manner like an animal and like a beast so that you are not hunted. Otherwise you get hunted. Uh, therefore, uh, there, is a, there is a great uh, virtue in having better technology. We have some drones, but we don't have enough. So, okay. there is always a shortage of uh, resources. Everywhere you will never get an ideal situation, you will have 100% of what you want. In your own line, you will find that you won't get um, the, the maximum, you will get the optimum. So, you have to optimize on what is available. So, we have some technology and we are doing our best to utilize it. So, how about the preparedness in terms of the Naxal infiltration around the Kerala border? This was Sorry? The last Sorry? Naxal infiltration around the Tamil Nadu Kerala border. Are we prepared? Yeah, it's um, thank God that uh, Tamil Nadu was one of the early uh, states to move into anti-Naxal operations. That was because of this firm uh, stand taken by Mr. M. G. R. Ramachandran, M. G. R., our former Chief Minister and Mr. Mohandas who was his intelligence chief in Chennai and Mr. Walter Devaram who was the DIG of Vellur for 5 years, 80 to 85, they virtually cleaned up the area. That was a time when slowly things were uh, developing in Andhra and Andhra did not take notice that time because between Chennai, Dr. Chennai and NTR, whenever they were in the opposition they were hugging, uh, they were coddling, they were embracing, they were more sympathetic to the uh, PWG, People's War Group which is the Naxalite group. Nowadays, we don't use the word Naxal so much because that time it was Naxalbari centric, 1967 Naxalbari movement. Okay. Only yesterday was the day, that is 20th May was the day on which it started. So the 50th celebrate, 50th year was being celebrated by some people. So we call it Moist now. So when Andhra also was starting slowly because of that uh, ambivalence of how to handle, uh, there was no firm stand in Andhra. 
in contrast tamil nadu it is very firm stand whether it is uh, mgr or jayalalitha or even mr karnanidhi they have been consistently uh, acting against this mob therefore we have the trijunction two trijunctions we have we are bothered about one is on the west that is a trijunction of karnataka kerala and tamil nadu mm -hmm. and in the east you have the trijunction of andhra karnataka and tamil nadu it is exactly between these two trijunctions that uh, veerappan was active i have mentioned in my book that exactly you start from this side somewhere near bandipur and here you take right up to delhi and little beyond this is the area which he was operating so i think uh, we have been we have been acting with promptitude and tamil nadu has been very alert in this front and that is why we don't have uh, problems so it is easy for uh, forested areas to be exploited by these people so we have to be careful that uh, this area should never become the refuge of such people apart from urban and town oriented problems in jungle it becomes little more ticklish to operate yeah. In, yeah. so i think uh, tamil nadu has been very uh, uh, proactive in this line thank you so much thank you, thank you. all the best